I'm just like anyone else that's sort of from New Zealand and I've had a lot of people come up and say inspired and all that sort of stuff like that and I'm happy to be in that situation where people can look at me and, and hopefully an island of the kid or a Maldi kid it's just like I don't have to be a performer I don't have to be a um, sports star I don't have to be an all black I don't have to be a kid I don't have to be a warrior I can do something else and, and live a very happy life as well so I feel like it's important the journey I'm on to document it for those types of people. Isaac, thanks very much for dropping in. This is this is cool. I feel like we're in control of a lot of stuff in life, and that comes with good stuff and bad stuff, right? We are definitely uh, masters of our own voice, and and I guess that's why I've been interested in tracking your journey and to what you say, what you do. Um, you know, and there's many things I want to ask you, bro. But I guess the first thing I'll ask you is, do you? Where do you kind of guide your ship? Who do you look to for advice? Is it yourself? Is it your past? Is it your future? A uh, combination of a lot of things. So first and foremost, gut. Like I feel like my gut's never really steered me wrong too many times in my life. And even though um, it always hasn't been like a clear path of where I wanted to go, I feel like that's been a uh, important narrative to follow. So mm. I'll when I was in football and I considered it to be the dream job and um, even though I was an average football player, I remember just going like, oh, my, oh, sorry. I was meant to go, oh, I'm over this, I want to move in a different direction and uh, I felt my gut was pulling me that way and I followed it. I didn't have YKTR and anything to sort of move in towards straight away but um, I worked really hard to sort of build that up and sort of felt myself pulling towards that and also with making vlogs. No one was really making vlogs at the time so I was like, but my gut pulling me towards that way. Podcasting, I just had a feel like I, I'd have a knack for podcasting. So I felt my gut pulling me towards that way. And um, I find I find following my gut's been super important in terms of uh, people. Gary Vee has been a massive, um, like Gary Vee's sort of been my guy that I've got all my sort of knowledge and business knowledge and everything I've built up has been off the back of his, um, his expertise and just consuming a lot of, lot of content from him and trying to execute as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the past, one of my main goals in life is not just to be in the same spot as I was this time last year. So um, that's sort of my, uh, I don't really have this North Star of like I want to inspire this many people, mm-hmm. I want to buy this company. I just don't want to be in the same spot I was last year. I want to grow as a person. I want to help a lot more people. I want to um, earn more income. Um, this is a topic that we don't really talk about within New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just want to build businesses and help a lot of people and sort of that's it. One, following my gut towards the future. Two, looking back on my past of I don't want to be the same person I was last year. Mm. And three, Gary Vee sort of be my guy. So those are like three. And, and I mean, you doing this for us and people hearing it and seeing it, I guess we can't understate how important that is, right? You can think about all this stuff, but at some point you've actually got to say it out loud. It's something that buzzes me out about the podcast is that we're actually talking about strategy and, and I guess, uh, tactical thinking, but we just, it's under the guise of a conversation. And it's quite amazing how that kind of uh, fits together. Are you like, you know, your family background and stuff, is everyone like you? Everyone following their gut? Everyone going out there doing stuff? No, nah, definitely not. Like I grew up in Tokoro, which is, um, anyone in New Zealand knows Tokoro and never been there. It's probably got a negative uh, perception about it. So I'm very cliche Tokoro. boy. Like my dad works in the mill, like everyone else's dad. Um, there's a big Cook Island community down there. I'm like, I'm half Cook Island, half white. Um, I was sort of fortunate enough, had that balance of like, I love sports so much. And my mom sort of pushed me towards education as well. So if I didn't do well in school, I couldn't do the thing that I loved, which was mm. play sports. So uh, I think we parented very, very well. When I look back in hindsight, I had parents that stayed together the whole time. Never had to worry about food. I was going to school and people didn't have lunch and stuff like that. I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is uh, underestimated. <laughs> you just sort of take that stuff for granted, yeah. you know what I mean? And I always had that. Mm. Um, yeah, like, yeah, just parented very well, I think so. But in terms of my family, very different. Oh, very, like, my family's quite reserved. My brother, he's a cop, um, quite introverted, loves playing PlayStation, like, Married his high school sweetheart, got three kids, and I just wanted to go out and see the world and always been loud, um, always been confident. 
my mum used to just tell me like, like be a bit more humble, be a bit more humble. Like, <laughs> that's just me. Uh, well, I just want to see the world, bro. So yeah, I think I'm very different to my family, but can really resonate with them at the same time. Yeah, look, and I, and I ask those questions because I guess a lot of people are, they say it as a bit of lip service, tell us about your history. But like for me, I'm really listening hard, right? Because one of the things I was gifted like you is three meals a day and probably actually I had four or five, which I'm battling with these days, but, but a sense of love, right? Uh, knowing that if it all wheels come off, there's people around me. And, and that's a huge gift that I, I guess I took for granted for a lot of my life, you know, not realizing that there's a still heaps of, you can, you can, I guess emotionally I've got lots of withdrawals I can still make and and I have been searching when I talk to people about well what makes us up and it you know because <laughs> there's a funny thing about the darkness or you know going through horrible times which gives us the strength but it is about trying to push and pull of it because you know I'm similar to your story half cook island half kiwi so able to dip into both worlds and actually leverage both which has been an amazing asset but when I look around it's like I, I don't always see that and it took me a long time to just suss out where do we all fit in this thing and so I am still on the pursuit of that and I don't know if there's a is, if there's a good answer I think it's something like an immune system you know it's our job to be different and varied and strong in different ways and I guess that's why I'm so interested in your journey because you know in the movie you making the NRL is the end of the movie and it's like yeah you did it right but you seem to have jumped uh, so so i guess what i'm saying is when you were coming to the end of that or whatever that looked like were you straight on to next thing next thing it's about growth um i remember when i was in football you always had the old guys coming for uh season like season launches and we'll get the vet from the 80s and it will come in and you always used to say enjoy football now because it'd be the best time of your life and I just always sit there and think well, like, why like, why does it have to be the best part of your life and um, like I was in that I was in that scene I was in that scenario and I enjoyed all the things that come with it like um, but I, I prefer my life now and I always say this if a coach come in and offered me a 1.5 million dollar contract for the next three years to play football I'd say no thanks I'm good mm -hmm. and that was sort of the sort of key moment for me so mm -hmm. yeah I'd like We've got, like, we've got such a long life to live and, and like why, why does that little 10 year decade of 20 to 30 have to be your best time like why can't it be 30 to 40 why can't it be 30 to 70 and like I said Gary Vee has always been my guy and one of the things he sort of talks about is perspective and the best way to get perspective is to talk to someone with regret in the eyes and when you talk to old people and they've got regret it's sad when you talk to former football players and they're still living in the past and still dwelling on that football career it's sad um and like just there was a key dinner I had one time and there was a guy he was a gun player but he wasn't in football anymore and he I remember him going to me you don't remember me anyway I don't play football anymore yeah. and I was just thinking fuck I, I, I just never want to be that guy I never want to be that guy and um I think being average at, at NRL level, like it's hard to make the NRL, but I was average at an NRL level. Um, what I realized about being average is like, I don't want to be average in this next part of my life. So it's been a combination of a lot of things and also outside interests, like sports wasn't always a be all end all. I love reading, I uh, love self-education, I love traveling, um, I love creating content. So I've tried to build business models around those things I actually love doing. Um, why, what got you into the clothing? And, and I mean, look, I'm super green when it comes to this. I obviously follow your label, but look, I shop at farmers and I'm the worst when it comes to fashion and stuff like that. But I definitely see that a lot of people seem to be kind of following what you're starting, which is like, you know, taking brand and attaching it to, uh, I guess, who we are as an external, you know. Um, was it always something that you thought of or were you identifying that, you know, fashion and stuff like that would be a good way? Yeah, it's like like you say fashion and then like I don't see ourselves as like a fashion brand, right. like I just see ourselves as a lifestyle brand and gotcha. um, like people was like, oh, we're really inspiration for clothes. I was like, oh, I just go. Essentially, like most of our sales come from like hoodies and T-shirts and like our like – people come into like, this industry and like, oh, I've designed this new T-shirt and it's going to change the world and I'm like, I'd like that stuff doesn't matter to me because I, I know what sells for us and I know that works for us. But when you look at a business model, um, I see ourselves as content creators first and then um, like garment dealers second. So um, my goal for this business and our business ethos is to um, pr provide the most valuable content, period. Nice. So in terms of education and entertainment, that's what we do. Like I'm trying to educate people from my platform, but then we'll do vlogs. We've got YKTR Sports, which is another umbrella underneath us that um, trying to entertain as well. And then 
we're, essentially you still have to be a business model as well. You still have to make money. We make our money through selling clothes and people feel inspired by um, our content. So, oh, let me support you by getting a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And that's how I see our business model. We're content creators first. We're a media company first. And we just sell clothes at the bottom part of the funnel. Yeah. Isn't it funny, right? Like, like we... And I'll be keen to hear your take on this. I've been thinking there's facts and there's truth, but there's narrative around that. And obviously, part of the narrative I've picked up and tied to is fashion and how we look. And and but you just you know carefully articulated it's more than that. And most things in life are more than that. But what I find interesting is the narrative that people take away, you know, from an idea. And it's it's it's. I mean, with all the content you pump out. Um, do you think of a, like a wider narrative? Do you, or is it an exploration of growth? And I guess, I guess there's no real question there. It's just trying to work out, you know, like what what are you saying on the bigger level? You know, when you're pumping out stuff, is it that you've got to make the mistake to learn? Is it that the pursuit of trying is the key? Um, combination of everything that you've just said there, but like the pursuit of trying is the key. Like I put up a tweet yesterday. I was like, try pumping out six pieces of content for your business a day and see, see if you get results off with it. So people sort of see me and like, see, I've got an attachment to NRL players and I was a former NRL player. So I've got this unfair advantage that no one else has. But, um, like I've, I've, I've worked my butt off like for the last like three, four years. And when you pump out six pieces of content a day across three different platforms, you're going to get in front of a lot of people. So mm-hmm. it's the other matter of trying, um, I feel like um, my strength as a person right now is to take complex scenarios and break it down into circumstances that they can understand. When I think about myself or when I talk on podcasts, I feel like I'm talking to my younger version of myself that I wish I had someone like this to talk to where I'll, I'll talk about tax and business. I'll talk about marketing and business, but I'll break it down in the circumstance that people can understand. And I feel like that's where I've been able to grow and get an attachment with a lot of people and I garnish a very little following off the back of that. And it just filters down to all those other things as well. Like my teacher. I get guys saying, I'll never rock your clothes ever, but I love your content. Oh, that's a win for me. Yeah. And I'm there. That makes me feel good. I've had people come through and go, I've contemplated suicide. You're listening to your podcast is, um, and the way you live your life has inspired me to do a bit of a different life. I've had that like six to ten times. Like, mm-hmm. what, what, what better feeling can you have um, and then inspiring someone to not only chase their dreams, but potentially live their life a few days longer or a few years longer or yeah, decade longer? That's important, bro. So, mm-hmm. um, I look at this on a higher level um, from a, a helicopter view and people see that I sell clothes, but that's just like that much of what I do. Yeah. And a lot of it's built around content and trying to inspire, not trying to inspire, just trying to document. And if you're inspired by me, that's on you. Uh, I don't want to get labeled as motivational or inspirational because it puts me into that category of people that are trying to be that. I just, I'm just trying to be me and, and, trying to be like it's okay to be yourself and it it's okay like i go out and get on the on the weekend and, and film it like and people are like oh people looking up to you like what are you doing drinking i was like it's okay to drink i'm 31 years old I'm, <laughs> i want to I wanna drink i want to get blind with my mates but then i don't want to get so i'd be disappointed if my kid was looking up to me and it was sunday night and i was angry that i had to go to work the next day or mm-hmm. disappointed that i had to do a job that i hated like I'd rather be the guy that's excited to go to work on a Monday and happy to live his life as well. Because what we do, and a lot of people do, is they compartmentalize their life. Can't wait to Friday so I can like enjoy the weekend. I can't wait till winter's over because I enjoy summer. Like if you th- if you think of that, that mentality, there's only two days you're excited about out of, out of seven, and that's 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 sad and that's um, that's disappointing and. Um, and like, like the swearing thing, like I swear and stuff all the time and people are like, oh, I've got kids looking up to you, you shouldn't be swearing. I'm like, people swear, man. Like, stop, stop, stop trying to protect them from everything in the whole world because once they get out to the real world and get slapped across the face, mm. it's, not, it's not so hurtful. So, um, it's like everything I do is rooted in the deep essence itself. Like, I want to be myself. And if you're inspired by that, by my journey, um, by me living my life on my own terms and excited to go to work, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Awesome, bro. Hey, we'll go to a quick little break. And uh, when we come back, I'd love to ask you just a, a couple questions about, you know, obviously when we show ourselves online, there's a version we play. I mean, it is the authentic version if you try hard enough and do it enough. But obviously there's what people don't see on the cameras and the podcasts. And I'm, I'm really keen to make sure that I don't go through these conversations without asking people about what's the strategies they use when it gets to too much you know and how can we come back from that so just stay with us for a sec brother
back in, bro. So, uh, yeah, man, on those, look, and we don't have to go, we go as deep as we want to. It's just an acknowledgement that we are people and we do go through these waves of life. Uh, well, I guess I'll ask, do you kind of get stressed? Are you someone who takes the world on the shoulders? Um, I don't think I get stressed. There has been stressful moments, but as a macro, like I really enjoy what I do and mm. like this kind of fun for me but uh, there, yeah there definitely has been times when you owe people like $100,000 invoices and you've got to figure out how to play that it's kind of stressful um, when you've got customers when you've like messed up an order uh, that's kind of stressful because you don't, I don't want to let my customers down and stuff like that so there's different types of stress learning to manage those is it's where it's at and like I, I like one in two people want to be in business and want to be their own boss And but I don't think like everyone's made for that because Above, like, I've got YKTR, I've got YKTR Sports. Uh, it falls on me, and I, I, I love that responsibility. Mm-hmm. I'd rather die my own sword. So I do, I do, you just got to understand, like, like if you want to play in the rain, you got to deal with the mud as well. So um, that's, that's very important, and I, I relish those sort of situations as well because it helps yeah. me grow. So nice. I, I enjoy being the, the top of the pyramid. I enjoy not having to answer to anyone, but I also understand what comes with it because if anything mucks up on YKTR or me personally, I'll be the first one in front of it, and oh, I think I'm good at that in the past. Yeah, bro. And look, can I pick up on one of those points is that it's cool to follow your dreams and do stuff, but do you think a bit we don't acknowledge always is that you might not win? You know, it's like just because you want it, it doesn't mean it has to happen. And I think this is an interesting point that I think about that that when you, you know, you, there's more chances probably that you won't, but that uh, that you won't make it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, right? I guess that's how I try and put this in my mind is that is the pursuit of trying or the dream. And that's why we should dream is because um, that you, yeah, have you kind of made peace with that, that it is not about the destination of making it? No, because um, like you only have to be right once. Like mm-hmm. I failed in multiple things, and like people see YKTR, and I like get this lot of credit and stuff now. But like I failed a couple of businesses before that. Mm-hmm. Like I'll talk about these. I try to start like a digital agency. I try to start a bunch of different things and um, drop shipping. I was into a bunch of. I uh, failed those, but I just knew it was just progression into the next thing. Yeah. And then like. For example, clothing company, super easy to get into. You can go down, get a blank T-shirt, start printing tea, start sending it online. Once there's an easy entrance point into something, it just becomes a Royal Rumble and it's just going to be survival of the fittest. Like, I do online courses. I sell online courses. I give away a bunch of information away for free. I've documented the whole journey of how you can do it too. But once you come into this game, I'll show you how to get into it, but I'll help you as much as I can. But essentially, you're competing against me and you're competing against YKTR. So if you want to come in, you're going to have to come in like correct and work your ass off. And anyone that does better than me, they're, they're, I'm just going to stand there and clap because I know how much hard work it actually takes to get to that certain point. So um, there's an element of like, I want to help everyone as well. There's an element coming from a sports background. I'm kind of in competition with everyone as well. Um, but if you beat me, it's it's on your own. Like you've done, you've done the hard work to get there. And that's something I'll, I'll like, even though I'm competitive, I will will help as much people as I can to get even better than me, which is kind of a weird, like, pulls in opposite directions, but I feel like it sums me up pretty well. Um, one question I was thought it would be interesting to ask is, how many, like, direct messages or emails do you get a day? Um, I, I, what I've done, I've taken off story replies, so right. if people want to message me, they have to go through on my main page, press message, mm-hmm. but for a while, it was probably around 150 to 300, and I pride myself in trying to reply to those, but it just got to a point where I couldn't, and that's why I sort of turned off the story reply, so um, at the moment, not too much, maybe about 50 to 70, depending on what it is, depending mm-hmm. on what type of day it is, but I found with story replies, people just like talk for the sake of talking, right. so... Um, it's not like my inbox isn't open and I will want to help as much people as I can, but just that small little bit of friction into there, they have to go onto my page and press two extra buttons. Um, I find I don't get all those, like, they're not spam, just like messages for the sake of messages. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah inbox fills up pretty quick, bro. No, no, I imagine it does. And look, I think the pursuit of trying, and there's something kind of tied into ego and stuff too when you're doing podcasting. And I don't mean for you, I just mean in general, right? Having a platform to say stuff and, and it's slowly building is interesting to deal with uh, the first few people who say, hey, man, I listen to your stuff. I mean, it's a buzz. But I guess if you amplify that 10, 20, 30, 150 times, 
it becomes a logistical nightmare. Yeah, it does. And it takes away from a lot of your time. And people talk about like diving into your emails at certain parts of the day and chunking that um, workload into that's what I do now. And I, it's unfortunate I can't reply to everyone anymore because it's just not like, like it's a logistical nightmare. It takes away like an hour or two hours of my day where when you first start now, I think it's super important. Um, when you're only getting those 10 to 20 a day, take your time and reply to them because that's how you sort of garnish your following pretty quick. And um, like there was a guy who was on, I was just on the podcast before and he goes, oh, bro, you messaged me like two years ago and it put me on the path that changed my life. And I was like, but I can't even remember it. But, <laughs> but it's just like, and I, it's, it's important to be authentic through those as well. But one of the reasons I started blogging, um, I used to write blogs off the back of questions I kept getting asked commonly. And then I'd go into do keyboard shortcuts and say like one of the ones is like me and my friends want to start a clothing company. Oh, I press 101 and it sends them a whole blog. So it's like a five minute blog that gives them so much information off the back of it. Um, and it saves me like for couple couple minutes and it's important once you start to scale out and you've got hundreds of people inboxing you a day mm-hmm. it's important to have those sort of shortcuts that you can just go to as well so yeah, bro. Um, um, strategy, bro. yeah and the shortcuts is an interesting thing i i learned something today why well, not really i heard something today about steve jobs he'd ordered wear the same clothes and it was one less decision for him so in your kind of day are you structuring a lot around just kind of trying to streamline decision making um, I go through different phases. Probably the one I'm in right now is focusing on it's called moving the money needle. So what I like, what I because I've got so many things on, um, or so many avenues I can take throughout a day. Where I've got YKTR, I start up a new business called Dice Digital. I've got my podcasting, I've got vlogs, I've got online courses, I've got YKTR Sports. So there's like six different companies or things I can focus on in a day. What my focus is on, what moves the money needle forward in terms of branding and getting money into the business first. So my first part of the day when my energy is high after I've been for a run and stuff like that, I focus on the stuff that's going to move our business forward and the main. Business I focus on is YKTR, the clothing side, because that's what makes us the money. Everything else, the podcasting, comes off the back of that. Um, and that's sort of the fun stuff that I love to do. I don't, sh- I go through phases. Like there's times I'll structure out my whole day. It'll be like from like 9 to 9.30, upload this content from 9.45 to this. I go through that and I do feel good after sort of doing those sort of lists as well. But um, the beauty about my life and what I do at the moment, I can. And I, if I had to focus on one thing, I'd get too rattled because I, I'd find myself getting bored and I'll just start procrastinating. I love the fact that I can jump on a podcast now and then go work on some clothes designs and um, go make another podcast and then start. Like, I love that about my life where it's very varied. Um, but like in terms of actual structure, I feel like I should be a lot better because I'd be a lot more efficient. So I do want to be more efficient because I'm like three and a half years in. I don't when I first started, I was bouncing off the walls. I'd be in at seven, I'd be home at nine. Like I love that grind, and it's important to go through that. But I'm at that point now. Like I want to be a smart business person, and a smart business person um, can do double the amount of output in half the time. So that's what I'm trying to transfer to now. Awesome, bro. We'll take a, a short break, and when we come back, man, look, we're on 11 o'clock at night on a Pacific Island only TV channel, and it's two half cookies talking rapidly about life, and I love it, right? It's kind of like the people who are hanging around this long, they're ready for some influence, and I think good and bad, so I like to push the boundary. I wonder if we might talk Frank in the next bit, just a bit about the realities of starting a business, you know, because everyone wants to. And it's like there's some mega grind that goes in. And maybe we could just have a chat about like some things, maybe top five things to do before jumping in. Is that cool? Yep. Sweet ass. Okay, man, so time to ruffle some feathers, Um, you know, and I'm listening very carefully. I'm about to kind of kick off a little venture, so I am the people also who should be listening. Like, before we jump into business, because you did mention before, like, not everyone should take on the burden of paying the bills and having the big invoices, but if you're really considering, uh, I guess I'd frame it up as um, um, pushing your own, you know, waka forward or something, you want to be in control, uh... What would your kind of, I guess, general advice be for those early steps? Um, firstly, make sure you enjoy a certain element of that business. I think I think everyone 
they see being your own boss, they see freedom. And once you realize you get into your own entrepreneurship, you're like, Shit, where's this freedom gone? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of working a nine to five and having the comfort of a salary and knowing your pay comes in on Thursday and you're getting X amount, this like there's comfort in that. And, and people, um, people who love comfort and love structure should stay in that. But if you've got this itch, that, like when you're asleep at night and you're like, oh, I just need to try something, I need to do this, you've got this itch that you need to scratch. I feel like entrepreneurship is for you, but then you've got to realize it does take time to sort of build and get to a point where you can take money out and pay yourself a wage and stuff like that. So um, I think real people that want to own their business understand that side of it as well. They they don't just see the good side. They don't just see the freedom. Um, they're not as scared of the hard work as well. So I would have posted like the first 5,000 orders on my own. Um, I never got paid anything, like a single dollar for like the first – I say like 16 months, but that was just kind of like side stuff on the, on the, but probably full on for like nine months. And these were like 16, 17 hour days. I was making all the content. I was learning how to build a website. Um, I think you got to be a jack of all trades as well. Understanding like, are you a business person or are you a creative? And you kind of want to be somewhere in the middle. Um, if you're doing a business partnership, get someone who's completely opposite to you. So what I find with creatives is like, they think their work should be speak for itself. But if you got this beautiful piece of work and you don't know how to in market, it's just going to hurt you. Mm. And you have this great product and like no one knows about it. You're not going to make any sales as well. So you deal with a lot. I deal with a lot of creatives and they're like, oh, I've spent two hours on this. No one cares. No one cares. Uh, unless you can market it into a, to a person. Then there's the other side is that people who's too business orientated and they're so sales orientated that they focus on numbers and they'll take shortcuts to get a sale. So you kind of want to be in this like middle and you've got to understand like, it's like a year to 18 month grind where you might not get anything. Um, stay in your day job, like work from seven to 12 o'clock at night, build it up and you'll appreciate it a lot, lot more. And when I say 18 months, the people scares people off a lot, a lot of the time, but there'd be someone listening to this right now and go, Oh, is that it? Is that only 18 months? Mm. About 18 months ago. It wasn't that long ago, was it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing with time, man, is it just rapidly goes on. eh? So, mm. And, and I mean, you did highlight before, we've got lots of it, and that's worth remembering. I mean, if you're lucky, you've got lots of time because it does feel like it progresses forward, but but you, I guess you do have time to reinvent yourself. And uh, yeah, man, it's an interesting. Look, I think the whole the whole thing about what we're talking about is interesting. It's the, it's the tension of the push and pull of, you know, what is it that I want to do? These are things that aren't that easy to answer. You know, what is it that I want to do? And, and I know for many Pacifica people, you know, um, cult, the, the cultural ties plays a huge part and, and what I need to do for the family and that, and that, like for you, bro, was there any, um, was there any bit of that where you had to kind of keep cultural for the Cook Island stuff or did you just have a free pass to just explore wherever you wanted to? I think having a white mom like really, really helped because um, like my mom would never take money off me. Um, so I know obviously within island cultures, when I get to a certain age, you'd love to look after them and they, they expect money from you or you give back to them. Uh, I do understand all that as well. Uh, I think my parents allowed me to be me, which really, really helped. Um, I was allowed to develop my own opinions on, on life and, and allowed to explore those as well. But I do understand that because when I went into football and I played with a lot of Islander boys and a lot of them were scared to talk back to the coach because obviously when you're an Islander kid, you, do, you respect your others and if you talk back, well, you're probably going to get a backhand. So um, it really, really um, – really hurt their development of like trying to get better because the coach will say something and they'll just go like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> taught to respect your elders but then like they'll go back and backstab them and tongue or backstab them mm. and be around all the boys so I think it, that really hurts them I think the element of you always have to give back as well which is important but then for example, you start a clothing company, everyone that's your family or your friend that you've ever known your whole life expects one free clothes or two a discount, where it should be the other, other way around. And I've openly talked about this. If your friend's gone out of the way to support a business, to start a business, you should pay full price. If you're a best friend, you should be paying full price. And I still say that now when people are like, no, nah, no, nah, that's not the way it is. And that's just because how we've been brought up where you're an island, you don't have much, but you give what you got. And it's, it's cash flows are, 
optimal thing in business and it keeps your business from growing and scaling and getting better. And if you're giving away all your money through discounts and to your families because culturally you feel like you're obliged to, you're going to hurt yourself in business a lot later on or you're going to slow down the progress or you're going to be out of business. So mm. uh, those are the challenges I, I faced when I was first starting because, like I said, like, I felt like I had to give everyone a discount because that's just what we do. We give. But um, you learn pretty quickly to say no and you get comfortable saying no. So Look, and I think it's a very interesting point that I'll just hover on just for a tiny bit longer because there won't be too many other bits of content going up today on this channel or content in general let's say on tv that specifically say get better at saying no like this is not popular to say and i love that we've got to do it at 11 o'clock at night with the audience that's here just to let it sink in because you know radical ideas are radical ideas but they're not when you say it it's just like, hey, man, you want me to do well if I do well and I can share the knowledge, but we're all got to kind of make, uh, well, you know, take an idea and make something of it and pay our way and everyone gets that. So I just think there's a really interesting tension. It makes me, it makes me wonder about, um, well, you know, when these early navigators were traveling around the world or even when our grandparents probably came to New Zealand, what their ideas for us were. You know, it's like pretty out there if you think that, if the goal was just to stay 100% traditional, then everyone would have just stayed where they are. But it seems to be the common trait as we explore, we go forward. You know, sometimes we don't come back. And I kind of see what you're doing as exploration, you know, just continuing the journey, right? Mm. And it's it's a um, like when you grow up as an islander, and obviously you're taught to perform, and like a lot of people go up in church and they're taught music, and then you're expected to be good at sport as well. Like, like who's the other guy in business? Like, who's the guy that we can like? Who's the John Alumni that we can align ourselves with? Like, oh, he's my north star. Like, I'm not into I'm not into playing football. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to dive into business. Like when I was growing up, I was like, who, like, who is that? <laughs> there, there wasn't really that that one islander guy, that one Maori guy that we sort of looked up to. Not even in my hometown. I thought you had to be rich to start a business I thought um, was only for a certain demographic and um, like uh, when we talk about that like I kind of want to be that guy as well because when you look at me I, I look like you're any I'm a standard kid from New Zealand like I didn't I finished like two weeks before exams started in seven form I'm from Tukuru like everyone knows where that is what it's about um, I'm like a Cook Islander like I'm I'm just like anyone else that's sort of from New Zealand and I've had a lot of people come up and say inspired and all that sort of stuff like that and I'm happy to be in that situation where people can look at me and, and hopefully an Islander kid or a Maldi kid just like I don't have to be a performer I don't have to be a um, sports star I don't have to be an all black I don't have to be a Kiwi I don't have to be a warrior I can do something else and, and live a very happy life as well so I feel like it's important the journey I'm on to document it for those types of people awesome bro well let's wrap it there i want to thank you bro for joining us on the podcast and you know and speaking to our people and look i say that very gingerly because i'm new into this pacifica game right i'm this is up, what am i nearly 40 and those 40 years have been about acknowledging the pakeha side right now i'm kind of diving into this other culture that i didn't know much about but i feel like that is uh going to arm me with whatever else i need to push forward with these ideas and that includes talking to people like yourself who are out there doing it in real time so hey man where can people kind of follow and and check out um you know your journey and what you're up to uh follow me on instagram at iice underscore ice is one of my original instagram names probably not the most easy to pick up but um yeah find me on youtube you can find me on uh apple spotify all those sort of platforms uh follow my brand yktr yktr sports trying to change the sports narrative in both countries as well um yeah hit me up Awesome, man. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, brother. Chill out, bro. Cool. Catch you, man.